although the government kept saying that they were going to do it, and they came up with a national action plan. Uh, perhaps the best idea of it is that the document still isn't translated into Sinhalese. It's a Tamil, it's there on the website. And it isn't something that if you ask any, not, any even probably people from the government, they have a rate of 195 page document. It's a short year for insomnia. You just try to read it. Uh, so that's where it kind of stands, and everybody's talking about it. And uh, the government said they put into action things, and then others, we would say we haven't put it. It hasn't been done. Uh, perhaps there's a little bit of movement up and down, but by and large, most people feel that the document has been addressed. So the NPC, a lot of organizations have written, and CPA has done that, and a lot of other organizations as well have written about the LRC and given a study on the document. Uh, what the National Peace Council does, and by the way, just to say something, I'm here the chairperson of the National Peace Council, but my bread and butter comes from uh, working at Habitat for Humanity, so, so I might take in between the two because they are connected. Uh, so the, uh, we decided that A1 was to kind of take the, take the concept of the document down to the people. Because one thing we have what we call is track one, track two, track three. Track one is at the top level, track two is the mid, uh, the business level, and the track three is the grassroots level. So we decided that we would like to take this document to the track three. So the first thing we did was we uh, assigned Margaret to come up with a shorter version of the document. And right now we've come up with a 65 page version from the 495 page version, which has a summary and looks at some of the issues of the document. So it makes it easier reading and probably a little more concise, and that's going to be printed and published. Uh, we've also taken, started having workshops for different community groups on the LRRC and the issues, we've taken the kind of key or current issues, especially for that particular area. We've been doing it over several areas. And uh, the ultimate idea will be to bring out little booklets in Sinhalese and English, because for the ordinary person, they won't wade through a huge document. So it will have to be the issues that would affect them or the issues that they could get their minds around so that they could come, they could kind of support whatever is in the future is being raised as a, as a way of uh, creating a, what do you call it, a, a kind of a, a surge or a kind of a, uh, a nice word for that. Uh, if somebody could help me out. Uh, it's a groundswell. Uh, a groundswell that would demand uh, something to happen. Now what happens is that the most of the time the groundswell is, uh, comes from different organizations or different groups of people or international. But if you really want to get something to happen, the groundswell must come from the bottom up as well as from the top down. And hopefully they meet somewhere in the center to get it done. So uh, we've been conducting these workshops. And one of the things that we've done is in the workshop is we, we, uh, we have a free test so that people say what they know about the LRRC before, and we find that almost all the people have about 5% to 10% knowledge of even having heard about the LRRC. So it's obvious that it hasn't reached the grassroots at all, and they just they just think of it as a something that's a bit of an interference and something that somebody is trying to foist upon, and they don't really know <coughs> that it's the government itself that did it, or that it's that. So this is the issue of where it stands now. So it's a long way still from where we <coughs> where we actually want to get to the point of creating the groundswell, but it's an ongoing program uh, that we've been having, and we've been having workshops in the different parts of the country, both in the north, south, east, west, it's all across the country. And, uh, and we find that the people are really interested. They are interested in the, in, in the critical issues. So basically on the LRRC, uh, that's what the National Peace Council has been doing. I probably would be able to communicate more if you have questions because I, it's, you know, it's a large amount of body of information about the LRRC. And uh, probably at this level, a lot of people know a lot about it. Uh, speaking about uh, SANA, which is, uh, sorry, about MANA, a program that we run in SANA for both uh, a resettlement of like 400 acres for both Sinhalese and Muslims. And uh, we see the situation, it's the developing situation, and, and everybody has a different opinion of what's happening. And how you solve this problem is going to be very critical. So one of the things that we've launched recently, which maybe I'm, I'll have to cloud it a bit because I'm not quite sure I can say everything, because it 
hadn't really thought of that uh, ground yet. It's also to try to create, uh, because at the end of the day, we can keep fighting like this, or we can keep arguing, or we can keep accusing each other uh, and go on till the cows come home, so to speak. But at some point, you've got to bring people to the table. How do you do that? Now, if you have a win-lose agenda where you say, okay, you are the perpetrators and you have to kind of lose in this one and we have to win, the chances are it's not going to happen or it's never going to happen unless there is a, a reverse war of some kind of other. And then again, you have the win-lose. So how do you create a win-win situation? And perhaps uh, the model of part of the model of the South African concept of the truth and reconciliation. But behind the word reconciliation is the word amnesty or pardon. Now a lot of people are willing to speak up or speak out if it means at the end of the day they are not going to be uh, punished or penalized. Most of the question arises that we have spoken to both sides, uh, both Tamils and the uh, Sinhalese and the Muslims and today even the religious groups like what would it take for you to be able to forgive people and to say, okay, we are ready. If you tell us the truth, if you tell us the truth, and if you say that you are responsible, are we ready to forgive and move on? Or do we want, like in, uh, who was it, uh, Shakespeare at time, we want our pound of flesh and we will settle for nothing less than our pound of flesh. So the question will lie finally as to whether after all of this, whether it's LRRC or whatever we are doing, whether we can create an atmosphere where people can uh, forgive each other, pardon each other, and say, okay, that's done, it's the past. Of course, they want to know that the truth, they want to have some accountability, but accountability usually raises the issue of somebody's got to go and get punished. And then if it's the government in position and the military, the chances of that are unlikely, so the war will be waged on. And this is an issue, therefore, that of course I'm sure different people will have different opinions. But it's one issue that we are working together with the LRC because that one concept alone won't solve the problem. So it has to be merged with a problem that can bring people to the table, that they can say, okay, we can find a way to work this problem out so that we can move forward. What we want is a goal where people are reconciled and where people have justice and where people can live uh, in peace in the sense of security. Uh, how we get to that goal is we have lots of these landmines before us and we've got to kind of find a way to 